hate myself. Oh my god. Well, hello, people with the internet. My name is Kevin, and welcome back to another video. Okay, guys, so for today's video, we are finally going back to the world of Harden. Harden. And we are reading After We Fell by Anna Todd, which is the third book in the After series. So as you guys may already know, I have been reading the After series for the very first time. I have read After We Collided and also After. I've also done vlogs for them. So if you haven't seen them, I'm gonna link them down below. Not up there, because I can only link one thing at a time. I'll link one up there and the other one's gonna be linked down below. And you should go check those ones out first and catch up with all of the shenanigans that has been going on in this series because there's been several shenanigans and so of course this is the next one that we're going to and guys it's 800 and something pages 800 and let's find out the exact number 834 pages for what like why is it that long so yeah we're going to be reading this one i kind of i'm looking forward to see what's going to happen because if you guys are aware of how the last book ended I obviously want to know what's going to happen next because of what happened. So I do want to see what's going to happen, but also Harden. I already said it already. Harden. But also Tessa, because I'm not a huge fan of Tessa either, but like Tessa's bare. No, she's not bearable. I was going to say she's more bearable. She definitely isn't. I don't like her either. But before I actually go on into the rest of this vlog, I just want to say a big thank you for 30,000 subscribers. I literally cannot believe we have hit 30,000 subscribers on this channel. Like it literally blows my mind. And just thank you so, so much for all your love and support. My last two videos that I uploaded were all pre-filmed. So I didn't get to like say thank you in those videos. So I just wanted to make sure I said it in this one. And I just wanted to say thank you because I literally cannot believe we are at 30,000 subscribers. Like that number is just insane to me. And like, I just can't believe it. So literally, thank you so, so much. It literally means the absolute world to me. Okay, so back to the topic at hand, After We Fell. Now, this is called After We Fell. So in this book, are we gonna like see how they got back up? Is this a growth story? Like we would love that. Like we love some like growing up, um, like getting up from your fall, love to see it. But like, is that what this is gonna be about? Probably not. Like stuff is probably gonna happen again and I'm gonna get annoyed. And also I do wanna say that I did actually see the movie for the second book after we collided. And I once again, preferred the movie over the book because the movies are less problematic than the books. However, it's still nothing great. Like it's not the best movie I've ever seen, but the movies are definitely still just better in terms of problematicness. <laughs> Is that even a word? Problematicness? I've just met it a word if it isn't. So hopefully, as we all know, when it comes to me doing my reading for the first time series, I do include spoilers. So if you do not want to be spoiled for this book, do not continue watching because when I'm reading this, I'm gonna be sharing everything, giving you all of the information so you don't have to read it for yourself. So yeah, once again, if you do not want to be spoiled, then do not continue watching this video. So yeah, now it is time to go start reading. I don't even know how long this is gonna take me. 800 pages, why is it so long? Okay, here we go. Time to begin. <laughs> can't believe we're diving back in again. Here we go, prologue. That was a very short prologue and it's basically just talking about like her dad walking out on her and her mom and stuff and like she's talking about her Barbies and stuff like that and like how Barbie was never alone because she always had Ken. So I'm assuming she's referring to herself in this situation as being Barbie and Harden being Ken. Choice. One thing that I like is how Harden and Tessa kind of have like this similar relationship with like their dad and stuff. And I think that's something that they definitely bond over, even though their relationship is extremely toxic. They definitely still have something that they relate to and like a thing that they can share together. And I think that's probably gonna be more discussed in this book, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay guys, so I'm up to chapter two and page 13, like literally not far at all, but it's a hardened chapter. And basically what has happened is Tessa obviously met her dad and everything, and she invited him back to her and Harden's apartment to like give him dinner and just like to spend the night because we think that he's homeless. So obviously she's like looking out for her dad and she wants to like give him somewhere to like have a shower, have some food and stuff like that. And basically Harden just said something and <laughs> I'm just gonna read it out. Tessa's piece of shit sperm donor scarfs down two plates of food before even stopping to take a breath. 
Arden really doesn't hold back, does he? But yeah, I don't know why, but I was just like, okay, that was an interesting first line of your chapter, Harden. Hello, welcome back to my life. I don't want you to be here, but you're here. Okay, guys, so it's a little bit later, and I've actually gone up to page... <laughs> not very far since I last spoke. I'm on page 35, but I want to talk about something because I am kind of sick of like the whole Zed and Tessa relationship thing, whatever's going on there. They're kind of make, trying to make like a love triangle thing and I just don't understand the point. Like, why did she introduce Trevor in the second book and just never really play on that and then have Zed and then like in the movies, they've gone more the Trevor route and kind of forgot about Zed. I don't really understand that. Like, I don't know, I'm a little bit confused. But basically where I am right now, Harden is basically having like this meeting where he is gonna see what charges he has for what he did to Zed at the end of the second book. Because if you don't remember, him and Zed got into this big fight basically. Harden ended up destroying like property in the college and stuff like that. And he like beat Zed up and Zed was in hospital and he was like gonna press charges, but Tessa, convinced said not to press charges. And that's what you miss. And Harden's in there finding out if he's gonna get like removed from the college or sent to jail basically. And also another thing is that Tessa is moving to Seattle with the publishing job and Harden still doesn't know about that yet. And then when Harden has gone into like his meeting to see what he's gonna get for doing what he did to the college or whatever, Tessa texts Zed to meet her outside of the building and Zed comes they talk or whatever and Tessa's like to Zed I thought you weren't gonna press charges against Harden like why are you doing this and then Zed's like well he did beat me up look at my face like of course I'm gonna press charges and then basically Zed is like talking to her about like why does she stay with Harden and all this kind of stuff and he says like how why hasn't she told Harden about her moving to Seattle yet? And Zed says, you won't tell him because you know he'll leave you. Zed snaps, his eyes looking past me. Then Tessa goes, he, well, I don't know what to say because I really fear Zed's right. Well, guess what, Tessa, you can thank me later. For what? I watch as his lips turn up into a wicked smile. Zed lifts his arm up, gesturing behind me and a shiver rakes through me for telling him for you. I know that when I turn around, Harden will be standing there. Harden now knows that Tessa's moving to Seattle for her publishing job and the fact Tessa didn't tell Harden they're gonna end up in a big row and a big fight and oh my god. The drama just keeps unfolding with this book. Like honestly, honestly, it just never stops. I don't understand the whole point of Zed. Like what is he bringing to the table? Nothing, why are you here? Like Zed, no one's asking for you to be in this book. I wanted Trevor, like get rid of Zed. I don't want him, I want Trevor. I want him back. Okay, so I read the next chapter and how it all unfolded. And basically, yes, they had a fight. We were new. Nothing shocking there. But Harden ended up telling Tessa that, like, she either has to choose moving to Seattle or him. So he literally just gave her an ultimatum. And I am really hoping that Tessa does not pick Harden over moving to Seattle and having a dream job in publishing. Like, after everything he's put you through, please, please. Do not pick Harden over moving to Seattle. I really hope she's not gonna do that. Like, I know she's gonna do it. She's gonna pick Harden, isn't she? She's gonna do it. Any of you have, that have read this, I'm talking to you right now. She's gonna do it, isn't she? Okay, everyone, it is the next day. I didn't really read much yesterday. I got up to page 61 and I just wanted to talk about something that happened before I stopped reading because I never vlogged it. It was just Harden being typical Harden. Like, are we surprised at this point? No. No, we're not. Basically what happened is Harden told Tessa that he ended up getting expelled from the college. Like, he got expelled. But then he got mad with Tessa because about Tessa going to Seattle. And then Tessa and Harden ended up having a fight which surprise, surprise, never happens. Like, I think this is actually the first time in the whole series they've had a fight. And basically, Harden told Tessa that he got expelled from the college and that that's why, like, she needs to come to London with him because he's not going to Seattle and all this kind of stuff. But she still hasn't chosen if she's going to do Seattle or she's going to go with Harden. And then Harden gets very pissed and he ends up going to the bar with Tessa's dad. And the both of them end up drinking a lot and stuff. And we find out that Harden was actually not expelled from the college. Like, he's not expelled at all. And he tells Tessa's dad this and he's like, okay, I don't get it. You need to tell me why you would say that. And then he goes, because I want her to go to England with me. And she isn't exactly thrilled with the idea. I don't get it. He pinches the bridge of his nose. Your daughter wants to leave me and I can't let that happen. 
my face says it all. So you tell her you got kicked out of school so she'll go to England, basically. So Hardin just verbally admitted to the fact that he's manipulating her. Like he, li he just admitted to it, like to another person saying, I'm manipulating her by saying this to make her come with me. But I actually can't with this boy. Annoyed, but not surprised. And now basically Harden and Richard, which is Tessa's dad, are having a fight at a bar. Once again, annoyed, but not surprised. Okay, so I'm on page 72 now. Literally, I've read 12 pages since I last spoke and Tessa is having lunch with Steph. Like she rang Steph and decided to have lunch with her. And Molly is there. And we all know how Molly and Tessa don't really get along. And literally Tessa just slut shames Molly the minute like Molly sits down at the table. So loved to see that. And then... <sighs> I laugh because I'm uncomfortable. But like they're talking or whatever and Tessa reaches into her bag to pull out her phone. And Molly goes, oh my god, no need to call daddy. Referring to Harden as daddy. Harden, Scott, and Daddy should not be in the same sentence. <laughs> like, absolutely not. I I don't like that. Don't want to see it. That's something I don't want to see. <laughs> okay, now I'm not laughing because I'm uncomfortable. I'm actually laughing because it was funny. I literally have, like, the next page after what I just read out to you. And Tessa texts hard to say, like, that she was uncomfortable because Molly was there. And he just says, come home. And then she was like, no, I'm hungry. And then Harden, <laughs> Harden says this back to her in a text. I've got something you can eat here. <laughs> And the thing is, I read that line and then all I'm hearing in my head is this... Uh, uh, <laughs> Literally all I'm hearing in my head is the WAP song and I'm just singing that gobble me smile. <laughs> Okay guys, so I am now up to page 169 of After We Fell and what has just happened basically is Harden, Tessa, Landon, Ken and Karen are all gone up to like their cabin that's like on a lake where they have a boat and they're basically having this like weekend trip together and so that's all happening and stuff and then Tessa and Harden were like having sex in like a hot tub and stuff. And then Harden wasn't using a condom. And then he thought that Tessa didn't remind him about a condom because she wants to be pregnant so that he'll have to go to Seattle with her. And I'm like, no, Harden, no. That's like, she's not a manipulator like you are. She has her own demons, but like she's not a manipulator or maybe I haven't picked up on it yet, but like she's not a manipulator. And so Tessa freaks out when Harden says this and he thinks this and she's like, how could you think that? All this kind of stuff, they have a fight, blah, blah, blah. Nothing new here. And then basically we end up hearing Harden on the phone to someone and we find out that it was Sandra, which is basically like this real estate agent that Tessa has been working with to try to find a place for her to live in Seattle. And Tessa hadn't heard anything back from Sandra for like a while. And she was kind of like, oh my God, I don't have anywhere to live when I get to Seattle. I need Sandra to call me back. Now we know that Harden was the one ringing Sandra, telling her not to give Tessa a place to live. So Harden, once again, manipulating the situation. <laughs> Just can't. And Tessa's gotten angry with him again. And like, she's like, I'm done. I am done. And I'm like, are you really done? Like, are you though? And I'm just like, I don't think you are, honey. Like, I really, really don't think you are. Like, I literally can't take either of them seriously when they have a fight, because I'm like, we all know what's gonna happen, so like, don't tell me you're done when you're clearly not. Also, before I continue reading, I just wanted to show you that I have a reading companion in the form of my dog, Bella. Oh. <laughs> Oh, big yawn. Okay, guys, so it is a couple of days. I didn't actually read anything yesterday because I was just like, nope, I don't want to read about Harden and Tessa. I just don't. And where I am right now, basically what has been happening is Tessa just basically officially told Harden, 
I'm going to Seattle. Don't care if you're not coming because I don't even want you there at this point because you're such an asshole for like trying to stop me from going. And I'm like, thank you, Tessa. Thank you. And then Harden's still mad and he's like, oh no, it's fine. I know she's still going to come to London with me. Like I have her, like she's mine and all this kind of stuff. And he's just been controlling and he's just so arrogant and just thinks, uh, <laughs> he angers me so much. As I said, they're on like this little trip, like a weekend away and they're staying like these cabins and stuff beside this lake. There is another girl that is friends with Harden's dad and Harden and her have been talking and I really am liking her. She also has a girlfriend so we have a queer character finally in this story which I love to see. And the fact she's already like one of my favourite characters of like all of the whole series and she's only been in it for like a short period of time just goes to show the power that she has. But also Harden is also being a dick again because he is like trying to make Tessa jealous by like making Tessa think that Lillian and Harden are like having a thing together even though Lillian has a girlfriend she's not interested in Harden she's never even dated boys she, like literally she does not give a shit about Harden but Harden just being the awful boyfriend that he is is just trying to make his girlfriend jealous like you don't do that to your partner you don't try to make them jealous with someone else like why why would you do that and so they're at this dinner with like Lillian's parents so Lillian's there with her parents uh, Tess is there with Landon and Ken and Karen. They're all there and Harden's sitting beside Lillian being like really flirty and stuff and it looks flirty to Tessa. Tessa doesn't even know that Lillian has a girlfriend so she has no interest in Harden. So Tessa's getting jealous by it. And then there's this waiter who is like looking at Tessa and stuff. So Tessa goes outside at one point during the dinner and she starts talking to the waiter. Then Harden comes out and like gives out to the waiter saying that he's gonna bash his head in or something. And the waiter's just like go ahead because my dad and like my granddad are like the sheriff and like the head lawyer of the whole town so I'm sure nothing's gonna happen to me it's gonna happen to you you'll be going to jail and Harden's kind of just like sitting there like because he doesn't know how to react to the fact that he just got told off and like he actually got someone answering him back and so and so the waiter goes back inside then and then Tessa and Harden have an argument again she says that she's done she can't keep doing this same conversation we've heard a million and one times and then Tessa goes back into the dinner and Harden leaves and he's all mad he's all angry and then Lillian as I said here is the part where she has the moment where I love her so much because she does not go easy on Harden whatsoever she calls him out she drags him I'm here for it because one million percent I can now confirm that Harden Scott is the character I hate the absolute most from any book I have ever read. I cannot stand him. Anyways, now that I've told you that, let's get to what Lillian said so I can tell you why I love her and I stand and she's an icon. So a bit more context, Harden said this to Tessa and that's why Tessa walked away and got pissed with him. He said, there is a big difference between not being able to live without someone and loving them. So basically he said to Tessa like, I don't love you, so love that. And now Lillian and Harden are kind of talking about this and Lillian's trying to figure out why Tessa went away. And Harden says, I don't give a fuck what she thinks, referring to Tessa. I hope she's thinking I'm going to fuck you. And then Lillian says, why? If you love her, why would you want her to think that? Oh, lovely. Now Lillian is turning on me too. I turn to face her. Because she needs to learn that, and then she gets he gets interrupted. Lillian holds up one hand, stop, stop just there. Because she doesn't need to learn anything. It seems to me that you're the one who needs to be learning something. What did you say to the poor girl? I said what you said to me this morning about there being a difference between not being able to live without someone and loving them. I tell her. She shakes her head in confusion. You said that to her as in you can't live without her, but don't love her. Yes, did I not just tell you that? Wow, she's laughing at me too. What's so funny? You are so clueless. When I said that to you this morning, I wasn't referring to you, I was talking about her. I meant that just because you think she can't live without you doesn't mean that she's in love with you. You assume that you have her so wrapped around your finger that she won't leave you because she can't live without you. When in reality, it seems like you have her trapped and that's why she won't leave you. Not because she loves you, but because you've made her feel that she can't be without you. She just went in on him, like absolutely iconic. I, he just got read to filth, like absolutely read to filth, dragged to filth. I am so 
here for it. And then Harden just goes, no, she loves me. I know she does. And that's why she'll be following me out here any moment. And then Lillian just goes, does she? Why would she when you do things on purpose to her? <sighs> Can we literally just give a crown? To Lillian. Like, I'm pretty sure she dropped her crown. We need to put it on her. Like, absolute icon. Moral of the fact, bottom line, I love Lillian. She went to town on Harden. Harden got ripped to shreds. I'm here for it. Yes. So that's where I am. I'm on page 223 and I just am really hoping that Tessa has finally pulled the plug. Like, I know I've thought this several times that, like, they're actually gonna break up, but I really hope this is it. This is when they stop. I really, really hope they're gonna break up. Like, I've never wanted a couple to break up so much in my entire life. A few moments later. She left him. Tessa left Harden. This is a great day. Like... I feel like this is a victory for us all that she just finally left him. I'm so happy right now. But what are the probabilities that she's probably gonna go back to him at some point? Very high, but as of right now, she just left him. Like she literally packed up her stuff and she was like, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. And it was actually very convincing this time to see how done she officially was. Cause Harden was like, I know I've definitely lost her this time. Like she's done with me. And I'm like, I really hope that you are done with each other because I can't take it anymore. Good morning, everyone. It is the next day, and I know I never really vlogged yesterday much after what I said and me being happy at the fact that Tess and Harden finally broke up and like she's left him. That's basically what happened. I don't really know what else to say. They just finally had enough. Well, Tessa finally had enough. She was like, I'm gone. Bye bye. I'm going to Seattle. And then something happened that. I think is probably one of the worst things that's happened in this whole series because what happened came out of nowhere and I think it was handled absolutely awfully, like so badly handled. And I wanna say that if you ever plan to read this book, which I would not recommend reading, there is a trigger warning and content warning for sexual assault. And I'm not going to talk about what happens, but I want it to be known there is a huge trigger warning for that because it comes out of absolutely nowhere. It's very, very uncomfortable to read about. It's infuriating. Just, no. A huge, huge warning. Please, please, please know that if you ever plan to read this book. All I will say is that I hate Steph. That's it. If you've read the book and you know what I'm talking about, there you go. And that's all I'm going to say because as I said, I think this was handled awfully and I just don't want to talk about it anymore. So I'm on to page 372 and I'm almost halfway and this book is dragging. Dragging. Why is it so long? I'm going back to what I said at the very start of this video. Why is it 800 pages? I just want her to go to Seattle. She needs to get away from all of these toxic people. Like the only non-toxic people in this whole series I think are Landon and Trevor. So like, oh also maybe Kimberly. So I want Tessa to be with those characters because she does not need to be around any of the others. She needs to cut them out right now. Okay, so I'm now at the page 395 and Tessa is basically on her way to Seattle and stuff. And I can't remember if it was after we collided or after where I said how I found a comparison between Taylor Swift because one of the lyrics sounded like the song all too well. But now it's literally been confirmed <laughs> Taylor Swift reference. And I'm so upset that Taylor Swift is associated with this. Like my queen Taylor does not deserve this because Tessa is in the car driving to Seattle and it says, my mood lightens with the sky and I find myself singing along to Taylor Swift and tapping my fingers on the steering wheel as she talks about trouble walking in and I laugh at the irony of the lyrics. No. <laughs> like the song, I guess, works for her situation, but like saying I knew you were, like she's also talking about I knew you were trouble. And that obviously makes sense because I knew you were trouble, referring to Harden. Like she already had this like idea of what Harden was gonna be like before she met him and stuff. So she knew he was trouble before he walked in. But don't confirm it for me, Anna Todd. I do not want you to associate my queen, Taylor, with this series. Like, no. It's bad enough that Harry has been brought into it. Do not bring in Taylor, too. Okay, everybody. So it is later in the evening, as we can all tell. And I have made more progress with the book. I'm up to page 
477 and I don't really have much to say except like remember how excited I got because I thought they were officially broken up and she was going to Seattle and like she was done with him. Obviously we knew that that was too good to be true because they're back to mm, actually are they back together. I think what they are on basically right now is what you would call a Ross and Rachel situation because they're kind of on a break and if we've seen friends we know what that means when they say they're on a break. I think they kind of are on a break but they're also kind no they're definitely not because like Tess is in Seattle now which also by the way Tess's boss his name is Christian and he just moved to Seattle to set up a business. What other series does that sound like that I've read already this year? You know what I'm thinking. Oh my god imagine that crossover. Christian Grey and Harden in the same. Removing that thought out of my brain. But anyway, sorry, I just got a bit sidetracked there. But basically, yes, yeah, she has moved to Seattle and Harden and her keep like phone calling each other and they've been having a lot of phone sex. Very uncomfortable and weird to read about. Didn't enjoy. She also like kind of was hanging out with Trevor a lot, which I was getting excited about because we all know I love Trevor and I love Dylan Sprouse playing him in the movie. I was excited that Trevor was coming back into it, but once again, they didn't go into more of his character. Nothing there. Irrelevant, basically, and it makes me so upset. And then also, she was like phone calling Zed to like thank him for saving her earlier on in the book. And then Zed said he was going to come visit her and all this kind of stuff. And then Harden was getting mad about her talking to Zed. Anyways, we also then find out that Harden was letting Tessa's dad stay with him again. And we also are finding out that Tessa's dad is taking drugs. So there is a content warning and trigger warning for that. And we found out all of that. He's not told Tessa that yet. He always just withholds the information that he needs to be sharing with Tessa. They basically were saying how much they miss each other and all this kind of stuff. Because maybe Tessa doesn't actually like Seattle, which I'm like confused about. And now basically Harden has showed up in Seattle and he's there to see Tessa. And clearly they were not on a break. Just like Ross and Rachel weren't. Hindsight, this just reminds me of Ross and Rachel being on a break. But that does not mean that Harden and Tessa are each other's lobsters. No, no, let's not get it twisted. I am definitely going to try and finish this book tomorrow because I've been reading this for so long and I just want to be finished with it. So I'm going to go to sleep and hopefully I will finish this tomorrow. Okay guys, so it is the next morning and I have been reading more. I am <laughs> nearly finished it, finally. And I'm up to page 586 and I literally have nothing to even talk about because nothing has been happening. Literally, Tess is in Seattle, Harden didn't move, that's all that's been happening. Tessa's dad has been staying with Harden. Then Tessa was like missing Harden and stuff so he came up and visited, they had a lot of sex. A lot of that. Now he's back in Washington or wherever and yeah, they miss each other again and that's basically it. Like nothing has happened for like a hundred and something pages. There was literally just so much sex and I was like, I don't care. Like I really don't care. I don't want to read this. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like what else is there even to say? Like they were just doing it literally like rabbits. And once again, Harden is just being like so jealous because she was talking with Trevor and going for lunch with Trevor and stuff. And he's just like, no, no, no. And I'm just like this boy, this boy, this boy. <laughs> and he keeps constantly saying like how no other man can ever have her and all this kind of stuff. So like his possessiveness and his controlling. But like, why is this book just so long? I've said this several times throughout this video. Why is it? Because Nothing has happened compared to the other two books. I feel like more stuff happened in those. The only thing that I can remember about this book is the thing that I hate about it and that's the sexual assault scene that was literally there for absolutely no reason. It was just thrown in there for shock factor. Literally nothing handled awfully. Why is this book so long? Okay guys, so still have not finished the book. I'm up to page 714. I would have got this finished earlier today, but I ended up taking a nap on the couch instead because you know what? 
prioritize an app over Harden Scott. That's my motto. And what has happened since I last spoke to you? Nothing much, to be honest. I think the only thing, real thing that's happened is we know that Harden's mom is getting married and he kept this from Tessa. He didn't tell Tessa. Then Tessa found out and she got mad that he never told her. But then Tessa's boss ended up applying for a passport for her. So Tessa will be going even if Harden doesn't. So yeah that happened and the other thing that happened is basically tessa found out that her dad is on drugs and her mom showed up to like take tessa away from her dad and then basically tessa's mom just sat tessa down and said i have so much to tell you so i feel like we're about to get a big scoop like a big tea spill everywhere like youtube channel tea spill needs to cover this because it's about to get juicy so that's where i am a hundred or so pages left to go I will get this done today. We are finishing it. Okay, just a quick update. I've kept reading and the juicy tea that we were waiting for is the fact that Tessa's mom and dad never actually got married. They faked it. They took each other's last names, but they never got like the paperwork signed. So they were never officially married. That was the tea. Quite underwhelming. Not hot enough for my liking. We're sad. We're disappointed. Like, what was that? A few moments later. A plot twist just happened. I'm on page 797. I literally have like barely anything left. And Harden and Tessa are now in London for Harden's mum's wedding. And basically also another thing they need to know is that Tessa ended up meeting that girl Natalie from After We Collided. Remember I told you before how Harden did other things with girls and he videoed it and he did one with a girl named Natalie back in London. Tessa met that girl and they got along well. They had talked about Harden and said that they're glad that he's better than what he was, even though I don't think Harden is better. So that happened, but then later on that night, they're all gone to bed and stuff, and it's the, the next day is the wedding. Harden's mom is staying in a different house compared to her uh, fiancés, because they're doing the tradition where you don't see each other the night before. And Harden wakes up in the middle of the night because he's like really hot, so he goes to go like turn down the heating and make it colder. And he sees his mom on a table with her legs spread and it's not her fiance that's having sex with her. It's Christian Vance, AKA the guy who owns the publishing that Tessa works for, that is engaged and married. Kimberly. <laughs> I am shook right now. I literally was reading it and I was just like, tea. Remember how I said earlier, I wanted some spicy tea that was like really good and juicy. This is the tea I was here for. Finally being served. A few moments later. What just happened? <laughs> like that ending. Christian Vance is apparently Harden's dad. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. I don't know how to react right now. Obviously I'm surprised and I did not see that coming, but also it just doesn't really make sense. I can't put it together, I'm confused. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to go to bed and I'll come back tomorrow with my final thoughts and yeah, because I just currently don't know what I'm thinking. So here are my final thoughts on After We Fell by Anna Todd. So obviously the parts at the end and like the plot twists with like Harden's mom having an affair basically with Christian Vance and then Christian Vance ending up being Harden's dad was a huge plot twist and something I didn't see coming and it did have me shook. But just because those like shocks and twists did work and I did get surprised by them doesn't mean that I enjoyed the book. I did find this to be incredibly slow and it really dragged. It did not need to be this long. I think I've said that several times throughout this video and you guys know how I feel about the length of it. Did not need to be this long. And then like nothing really happened in this book to like further the plot in like any way. I think that's really all I can say. The characters in here, none of them are really great characters. They're all pretty much toxic. I stan Lillian, which was the side character that was in it for literally, I want to say about 50 pages maybe. Loved her for when she like told Harden off and like read him to filth. I loved that. I lived for it. And yeah, that's all I really want to say. I will be reading the final book after ever happy or ever after happy or something like that because I do want to know more now about the Christian Vance thing because I still can't get my head around how Christian Vance is Harden's dad. Like who is Ken then? I 
I have questions. So yeah, I will be reading that soon and then the series will be finished. And yeah, that is going to be it for this video. Let me know down below in the comments your thoughts and opinions. And other than that, I shall see you all next time in my next video. So goodbye guys. Bye -bye.